finding theoretical probability using an area model. I'd like everybody to please take out a piece of paper and take down these notes that will help you in the steps you need to take in order to make an area model when you're looking at theoretical probability. We looked at tree diagrams and we looked at lists. Now we're going to look a little more closely at area models. So the first step is to read each probability situation carefully and determine the two different events taking place. It could be a spinner and then tossing dice, or it can be a spinner and then flipping a coin, or it could be taking free throw shots, any of the above, or it's looking at a path and finding all the different ways that you can get from one spot to another. We'll look at them all. The second step is to draw a rectangle. Then you're going to label one side of the rectangle with one event and label the other side of the rectangle the other event. Then you're going to divide the length and width into sections based on the number of outcomes for each of the two events. Then you'll count the squares created in the rectangle to find the total number of possible outcomes. When setting up your fraction, this will be the denominator of your fraction. Then you want to circle all the desired outcomes once you put in your information. The next step is to count all the desired outcomes, and this will be the number of your, the numerator of your fraction. At the end, you just simplify the fraction if possible, or make it into a percent. We're going to look at some possibilities of how you would do an area model with a couple of different situations. Here we go. In our first example, we're going to look at a situation where there's going to be one number cube and a spinner that has the numbers 5, 10, 15, and 20. Ricky is rolling a number cube with the numbers 1 through 6 and then spinning a spinner with the numbers 5, 10, 15, and 20. He then finds the sum of the number cube and the spinner results. What is the probability that his results will be an even number? So we're looking for his results to be an even number. Well, let's start setting this up. So the first step is we want to look at what are the two events. Well, the first event we're going to look at is a spinner. The second event is a number cube. So let's look at the spinner. The spinner has possibilities of 5, 10, 15, and 20. And the number cube has the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So we'll fill in the number cube. We'll fill in the, uh, the area model with the numbers. 5 plus 1 is 6. 5 plus 2 is 7. And I'll just keep going. There will definitely be a pattern here for each row. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, and 26. So now we're going to take the opportunity to look at the next step is we're going to circle the even numbers. So the even numbers are 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26. All right, well, let's see what we have here. Well, the first step is the total number of outcomes could be, if you look at this, it's going to be 4 times 6, so the total number of outcomes is going to be 24, 24. And what is the probability the result will be an even number? Well, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So we'll have 12 out of 24, which is equal to 1 half, which is equal to 50% of the time, we're going to have an even number. The second situation we're going to look at is going to be with free throw rates. This time they're not going to play a game like they played the other day with 0, 1, 2. It's just going to be one point for each time they get a basket. So here we go. Alex has amazing free throw rate. The probability that she will get a basket on the first try is 
draw a theoretical area model showing the probability that she <laughs> will make two baskets in a row. What is the probability that she does not make any baskets? So let's look at what are the two situations that we have here. So our first situation is going to be setting up the area model. So we're going to look at the first possibility is going to be free throw one and then free throw two. Let me try to see if I could change the size of that so it's easy to read. Great. All right. So we're going to set this up. We have a 100 grid square. And the reason for that is because it's 100%. So we're going to just break this up. The first three throw, if we look, it's an 80%. Whoops, let me try that again. And I will actually get a little bit of a thicker one. There we go. It's going to be an 80% chance that they make it and a 20% chance not making it. And on the second throw, it's also going to be an 80% chance of making it and a 20% chance of not making it. So let's look at the possibilities here. This is going to be 80%. And this is going to be 20%. And this is where they're going to make it. And this is where they're going to make the basket, miss the basket. Same thing down below. 80% make, 20% miss. So if we look at this model now, it's going to be 0.8, which is 80%, times 0.8, which is going to give us 64% of the time they're going to make the basket twice in a row. And down below, we're going to have 20% times 80%, which is going to be 16%. And if on the first throw they make it, but they miss it on the second throw, it's going to be 80% times 20%, which is going to be 16% again. And then on the first throw, if they miss it, and they miss it the second time, that's going to be 20% times 20%, which is going to be 4%. So the total possible outcomes would be 100 in this situation. 100%. And if we looked at this, the possibility that she'll get one basket, the probability of getting one basket is going to be, if I look carefully at this, it's going to be 16% and 16%. So if we add those two together, that's going to be 32%. The probability of getting two baskets is going to be 64%, and the probability of getting zero baskets is going to be 4%. And if we add them all up, it will equal 100%. The last area model we're going to look at is one where there's going to be some trails, and it's not going to look like any of the other ones we've done before. It's going to be very uneven looking, not as systematic as it's been in the past. So here we go. David is trying to find his way through the Avis trails and knows that there are some hidden bear caves deep into the trails that no one knows about. Show an area model of all the different paths David has to choose from. So let's create our paths now. We're going to start at the beginning of the trail, which starts right here. at the tree and we want to end up at the bear den. So here we go. We're going to start with four different paths. A, B, C, and D. I'll label each of those A, B, C, and D. 
from there, we're going to have some other paths coming off of those. From A, we're going to have one, two, three paths. From B, we're going to have one, two paths. From C, we're going to have one, two, three paths. And from D, we're going to have two paths. So now we're going to look at all the possible paths that we have. And we're going to label each of these by numbers as well, just so we have some better uh, ways to identify each of the trails. So we're going to have, this is going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So let's look at the total number of possible outcomes. I'm going to just go through them with you so you can visually see them. There's going to be a mathematical easier way to do it, but let's just see. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten different paths. There's going to be ten different possible outcomes. Ten different possible outcomes. From that, we want to know what is the probability of David getting into a bear using trail C. So if we just look at trail C, we can have one, two, three different possibilities. So we would have three out of ten, which would be equal to thirty percent of the time David could get to the bears using trail C. We're now going to take this information and turn it into an area model. So let's just review what we know here. So for trail A, we have A has one, two, three, B has one, two, C has three, and D has two. Let's see how we could set that up in an area model. So we're going to identify all the different paths. So we have path A, oops, <laughs> we're going to have path A, path B, path C, and path D. Each of those is going to have another section. So this is going to be, so that's going to be, for, we're going to call that path 1, that's the first path, and then we'll call this let me see if I can move this up for a minute so we can look at it better. There we go. Path B. Oh, sorry. Path 2. Let's erase that. Call that path 2. All right. So, from path, the first path, we have A, and A has 1, one, two, and three. Path B has only two paths. Oops, only two paths. Path four and path five. Path C has six, seven, and eight. And the last one is going to be, path D is going to have 9 and 10. And that's our area model to the cave. For your homework, I'm going to ask you to do the following question. I'm going to ask you to draw multiple paths from your house to any destination near your home and then draw an area model showing all the theoretical paths. Ask yourself the question, how long it might take you to use one path to get to your destination? Make it fun and creative, and I'll see you on Monday. Have a good weekend. Bye-bye.